Hi, you guys. Um, I am trying to get this video vlog out. Um, I have tried to do like five one takes. And so hopefully this one's going to work. I don't know. But I apologize that I didn't get a video out yesterday. I've just been having camera issues, which um, not necessarily so much camera issues, but just not being able to um, upload stuff. I'm still learning that kind of thing. And also I had wanted to um, talk about what happened um, last week at church, that incident that happened about the gossiping. And I had uploaded it and everything, but I didn't realize that because I'm still learning to understand the camera angles and stuff, it was my, half of my head was chopped off. So I had the whole video, but then I I couldn't use it. Like, who wants to watch that, you know, from here up? <laughs> it was kind of funny. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so I guess I'll start by saying that um, I had posted on Facebook about the situation. I didn't say exactly in detail what the situation was that happened. I just kind of alluded to the fact that there was a girl in my ward that kind of had done something that I thought was a little crappy and um, it was very disheartening for me because I think a lot of times that um, you can kind of um, move forward in a sense, maybe perhaps quicker if you, if it's someone that you don't um, aren't super connected with. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if it was somebody that was a stranger and like something happened, or even if it was just a friend, but they weren't like in your ward or, and I think Mormons can relate to this. Like you totally would understand what I'm getting to is like, it makes it difficult if something happens and goes awry in a friendship and you still have to see that person every week or every month or, um, in the congregation, or you're asked to be called to a particular calling and you have to work with this person and you're not really super fond of them. And this has happened to me like so, like more times than not. Um, well, maybe that's kind of stretching it, but the whole point is, <clears throat> is that it made it, it makes it more difficult in my opinion to have to deal with people and you have like a fractured relationship and they're members of the church in the same congregation. So you have to see them. And so I don't know if, you, if you're this way, but I know me growing up, I was always taught like, oh, give them the benefit of the doubt. They're members of the church. They're Christian, you know, well, not necessarily members of the church at the time because I didn't grow up in the gospel. But anyway, so my whole point is, is that I had gotten called to this calling a couple of weeks being in this new particular ward. And I was working with, you know, some women that I had become friends with and uh, more so acquaintances, I guess, not necessarily friends, but I had kind of befriended this one girl that I really liked a lot. She was considerably younger than me, but I just felt like she was very, she had it all together and she was very smart and, you know, she had um, her degree in um, behavioral science. And so I just really took to her, like, I just really enjoyed her company and I liked her a lot. Well, she was already in the calling. And so when I got called, I was called to be one of the beehive teachers. And so she was the personal, she was in the personal progress um, uh, role. And I don't know if that's a calling. Maybe it is a calling. I'm not sure, but I think it is a calling anyway, but she would come to church every week. And <clears throat> so we became really good friends. Well, as time went on, I felt like, she would disclose certain information about certain sisters to me that, you know, I kind of jumped on board because I really didn't know them. I just had known of my own experience with them. And I kind of felt like, yeah, you know, she is kind of that way, you know, if you say that and da, 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 whatever. And so I kind of like jumped on that train of not discouraging the gossip. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I could have, went to that person or, but I didn't. And so anyway, it just ended up being where it was kind of uncomfortable and I didn't want to kind of associate in when I wasn't teaching my calling on Sunday, you know, we're asked to go and do things like go to mutual or which is like a certain day of the week that the kids and the young, the youth get together and do activities and learn and things like that. And then they have dances and all different kinds of um, little field trips and stuff like that. So I didn't want to really go because I kind of had this, um, you know, sour 
taste in my mouth for these particular girls. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to be around that because, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's actually how they are or whatever. So anyway, long story short, which I don't know how to do long story short, but the whole point is, is that, um, in this friendship with this particular girl, you know, we were getting closer and, and I shared and disclosed some th certain things with her that I hadn't disclosed to anybody else. And, you know, she would come over, we would go shopping, we would go get yogurt, we would do this and that. And, um, you know, after a couple of the meetings, she would actually come over and say, hey, can I come over and vent for a little bit after this presidency meeting and da, 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 da. Well, she was the one that initially was the gossiper. I mean, I'm not trying to put the the judgment on her and that I'm completely innocent because I totally don't believe that. I know that I was wrong and I was at fault and I shouldn't have done what I did. But anyway, so a couple weeks or a couple months go by or whatever, and I had went to the young women's president and I said, you know, I'm having some struggles with some particular gals in our organization, the young women's. And I said, I would rather, you know, I'm trying to deal with that, but I would rather not come to the things, but I'll be there on Sunday to teach my class. And I said, if I feel like inclined that I can't do my calling or whatever, I will definitely talk to you more. And so, you know, the president said that was fine or whatever. Well, I never went to her or anything. I felt like, you know, I need to get it together and I need to make more of an, an you know, take more of an initiative to go to my meetings and stuff like that for the girls. Well, I noticed within the last like three weeks, just this past three weeks, that this particular friend was kind of like, I, I was kind of getting this intuition that she wasn't um, like returning my text as promptly as she normally did. Um, just she was being evasive and I could totally tell. Like I don't, I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand what it was until Sunday. So I go to church. I'm sitting in the congregation waiting for church to start. And one of the counselors in the bishopric comes up to me and says, Hey, Sister English, can I talk to you just for a quick minute? And I said, Sure, sure, sure. I said, Like, you're freaking me out. So anyway, we go in there and he was like, Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for helping out and being such a, um, you know, wonderful sister in your calling. We appreciate it that we would like to extend thanks for that. And, but we're releasing you. And, so I was taken back because I was like, it was out of nowhere, like two minutes before. And so, I mean, to be honest with you, during sacrament, that whole day at church, I was so upset and so um, irritated because I felt like I was kind of undermined. You know, there was like this, I felt like something was not right. And I didn't know what it was exactly, but I just felt like that the communication there was not like I had never asked to be released. I wasn't told that I was going to be released. There was no inclination for me to know whatsoever. And so anyway, I texted my friend and I said, um, in sacrament, yes, I know that's horrible, but I was so upset. And she had never, I had texted her, you know, a couple of days prior to that. She'd never texted me back. And um, I said, is that why you were being so ev evasive with me is because you were called to my calling. And um, anyway, so she didn't respond. Obviously, that's totally fine. I mean, it was, we were in church and stuff. And that's kind of disrespectful. But after church, she sent me this text saying, um, you know, I think you're misunderstood. I think da, 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 da. And she was kind of nice for the first two texts or whatever. But then when we kept corresponding back and forth, I noticed that she started to get a bit aggressive. Like, well, let's not make it all about you. Let's talk about what you didn't do in your calling and da, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And I thought I was just very upset because I felt like she ha and and this is where assumptions and judgments come in because I don't know factually. I'm only going under the assumption that what took place seems awful peculiar or coincidental. I don't know what you want to say, but I found it interesting that no one else in that calling was released. I mean, no one in the organization was released except for one other sister that she had initially 
the huge massive problem with so it got my video it cut me. off again i am getting so irritated with this i don't think i'm going to be able to use my phone much longer because it seems to be such an issue so anyway i'll try to get through this other one um and hopefully it won't cut me off but anyway so the rest of my conversation or the rest of my story was that i just found that it was interesting that she ended up being she wasn't necessarily called to my exact calling but i was the only one really Oh, that was a fly. That was weird. Okay, but I was the only one that was actually um, dis not dismissed, but released from my calling. Whereas she was then in the calling of the gal that she didn't like. Initially, she's the one that told me. So all of this stuff happens and transpires and I'm upset, crying my eyes out, you know, after church and stuff because I felt like, I just felt um, betrayed kind of. And whether that was the case or not, that's what I felt like. So anyway, so you should always remember this particular quote is that if they do it with you, they will do it to you. So in other words, in my particular situation, if they talk and gossip with you, that stupid fly is going to freaking drive me insane. Um, if they do it with you, they will do it to you. So if they gossip with you or they, you know, whatever the case is, I mean, if they cheat with you, they will do it to you. So if they gossip with you, they're going to gossip about you just so you know. So don't go under the illusion. And, and I know I was completely wrong. You guys, I understand gossiping is terrible. And it just goes to show that every time I do something that is not Christ-like, that's inappropriate, that I shouldn't have done, and I knew I shouldn't have done it. Because then you start to get this, um, you start to build up these walls. Because what happens is you don't want to therefore have to deal with it because now you've gossiped. But what I did is I went ahead because I felt like I would be able to be manipulated. And a lot of times I think we are manipulated by situations because we're afraid out of fear or someone will not like us afterwards or whatever the case is that we that we avoid stuff so we become very passive or passive aggressive which is exactly what i did and i realize and recognize that about myself and i really think that even though this is not a, an ideal situation and it happened it happened nonetheless i'm grateful for the experience because it's really taught me not to gossip because it's always going to come back on you it will always come back on you it might not be now it might not be five years from now it not might not be 10 years from now but i guarantee you it is never went it is never not went south with me. Do you know what I'm saying? Anytime I've ever gossiped, it's always come and hit me, you know, gotten me. So I, you know, the gal reached out to me. I didn't really want to have, I had learned from my mistakes. I called the bishop. I called the, the, the actual girl that I had been gossiping about and I laid it on the line. I said, you may not like me after this and you may not you know, care for me and that kind of thing. And we don't have to be friends. I understand that. I don't hate you or anything of that nature. I said, but I really am going to tell you exactly why I didn't like you and what I thought about you and what I, you know, what I had said about you, which was wrong. And I ask that you forgive me and I hope we can start fresh because I didn't want that to be some kind of, you know, um, I didn't want it to be, uh, um, what do you call it when it's like, they have something on you. I didn't want for that to happen because I felt like if this girl went to them and told them now because she is in the calling and it's like you have to still work with these other girls that I'm like, you were initially the one that was the mean person that started all of this. And yet now I'm the bad person? Like, no, that is not going to happen. So anyway, I went and like, full throttle. And I was like, I'm calling the bishop because I should have told him, you know, that I didn't appreciate the fact that I was released that way. I think the communication was horrible and, you know, kindly or whatnot. So I put out a bunch of phone calls and just said, you know, I mean, you can call it damage control or whatever you want to do, but I feel like I was just being forthcoming. And I thought I'm going to just lay it out on the table. And this is what I should have done initially. I should have never joined in, in the conversation about gossip and all that kind of stuff like this young gal did. And I should have just done that just initially. And 
I didn't, but that's okay. I mean, Heavenly Father, I know, forgives me and, and no one's perfect. Everybody's learning and we're all learning from our mistakes and I'm just grateful for the experience. But so when I called and I talked to the bishop and the bishop, you know, made me feel so much better about the situation. He's like, I'm so sorry, Sister English, that I know that that wasn't handled well and I sincerely apologize and I hope you can forgive us as a presidency that we didn't release you in the manner that was, you know, that it was just very hasty and it, it wasn't wasn't the best thing to do. And, and I'm so sorry for that. And that made me feel so much better. And then I talked to the other girl that I initially had gossiped about. And I said, I'm so sorry that I gossiped about you. And I said, but these are the things that I said about you. And they were unkind. And I am so sorry for that. And one of the main things that I had said about her was that she was very standoffish. Like I kept thinking, why is she so like abrasive? I couldn't understand. Like I had never known her. I'd never met her. And I didn't understand why she was so abrasive with me just right off the bat when I came to this ward. And come to find out this same situation had happened to her a couple of years ago when her husband was bishop. And that's why she felt like it was hard for her to get close to people because she was so hurt by someone that broke her trust and that was gossiping about her. And that same kind of thing happened and she lost some friendships for it. So she said, it's very difficult for me to get close to people because I'm, I'm, I find it difficult to trust people. And so I was like, if I would have just initially went to her in the very beginning and never done all of this or never joined in on this gossip se session, um, I just, I would have had more empathy and I just feel really bad about that. But I'm so grateful that I was able to be assertive and be, you know, confront the situation that where I was completely wrong in it and I shouldn't have gossiped. Anyway, that's the thing. Do not gossip because I'm telling you right now, it does not pay in the end. I mean, and furthermore, you feel like crap. Like, you know, like you're telling, you're talking about someone and you're telling all these things, then it's like, is that fact? Or are you just assuming from your own insecurities? Because that's basically what it is. I mean, let's get real, you guys. It's because that other girl is very insecure. And whether it's because that person is in a calling that she feels she's better at. Um, and that's another thing in the gospel that's really rampant. And it drives me ballistic is that people that are immature and insecure within themselves, they think that if you have this calling, you're more spiritual than so-and-so, when the fact of the matter has nothing to do with that, and it's just a sign of insecurity and immaturity. And I just think that that was her motive. I think she was insecure. She, she didn't like that... This other gal had more material wealth than her, and I think she resented it. So she went and gossiped and told things about me and told things about this other girl that weren't true and manipulated that situation, and I think that was horrible. So regardless of how young or how old someone is, I mean, I guess it just depends on the situation because some people can be very mature and some people... You know, but I mean, let's get real. I mean, you're 27, so your brain just developed two years ago to full capacity. So I guess I can't fault her because probably at 27, I was very much like that. Like, why is she in that calling? She's not better than me and she's this. But it's really all about insecurity. That's what it is. I mean, I am 40, almost 43, and I can say that. That's what, that's what it comes down to. Most of the time, people that do this stuff in church, it's because they're insecure, you know, so work on building your own self-approval and self-love and focus on yourself. And I'm telling you this, but I'm also telling it as a reiteration for myself. You know, confirming to myself that I need to remember to stay true to myself and believe in myself and know that Heavenly Father loves me no matter what. And um, I'm so grateful for the experience. I'm not upset that I had this experience. I'm not sad or angry at that particular gal. Um, I'm just stating fact, you know, I, I love her. I think she has so many great qualities and she's wonderful. And um, I just think that the communication was terrible and it wasn't a very, you know, uh, optimistic situation. So it wasn't going to go bad. I mean, we were gossiping. It wasn't going to end well anyway. So we might as well just admit that fact. So um, 
there, I think I got this entire thing. So it was gonna be two takes because the video won't record longer than what, six minutes, I think. Anyway, I know this was a super long thing. I apologize for that.